This is the only YouTube tutorial you need to watch to learn the best free text to voice AI. <laughs> Bark has some great advantages that you will not most likely find in any other open source library. If you are looking for a text to voice or text to speech system, Bark is really way ahead of every other open source project that is available. And starting May, Bark is licensed under MIT. That means you can use Bark to generate commercial voice or you can use it for commercial purpose. This is one of the things that a lot of people have been asking me on the channel, whether you can use Bark or any other open source model that lets you generate voice for commercial use. For example, you want to make YouTube videos or you want to use these voices as part of the application that you develop. You can do it with Bark now, thanks to Bark team. So another good thing is Bark has got flash attention support. That means on a GPU, you get much faster uh, inference, which is to generate the audio. And especially if you have got a PyTorch version greater than 2.0, then you get flash attention support that does much, much faster than any other RAM. And finally, finally, it's not just you always need a powerful computer to generate audio using Bark but you can also fit it in a low resource machine. For example, that typically like without any um, suppression, Bark would require at least 12 GB of VRAM, the graphics RAM of your GPU, which means you can do really good text to speech using Google Colab. But if you want, let's say you've got a old GPU, like something like 2090 or 3070 from Nvidia, then you can fit Bark in those GPUs even if you have got eight gigs of VRAM or graphics memory, just by simply setting the environment flag saying Suno underscore use underscore small underscore models equals true. With that, I'm going to directly jump into the Google Collab notebook that the Bark team has put together for us to play with the library. First of all, like we said, we need at least PyTorch greater than 2.0. So that is something that we need to check. So make sure that you have got PyTorch greater than 2.0 that supports flash attention, which helps you in faster inference. Even before that, the first thing that you should probably do is you need to check what kind of GPU that you have got. NVIDIA SMI will help you understand what is the GPU that you have got on your GPU machine. So in my case, I'm using Google Colab, which is a free cloud hosted GPU that Google provides us. It has got approximately 15 gigs of RAM, VRAM, the graphics RAM. And it has also got about 12 gigs of system RAM, the CPU RAM and 78 gigs of system disk, the storage that you have got. So as you can see now, I've already used approximately about 12 gigs of CPU RAM and six gigs of GPU RAM, which means we have like nine gigs of C GPU RAM remaining and the disk space is about 30 gigs remaining. Understand the basic configuration of your GPU, whether you want to use the smaller model or you can go ahead with the larger model in itself, which is what we are going to use. Make sure you install the Bark from GitHub repository. And also as a note, please do not install Bark from PyPy. So if you say pip install Bark, that actually installs a different package. It's not managed by Suno. It's, it's strange that they could not get it working. So anyways, the point is that do not do not do pip install Bark always install it from their GitHub, which installs the latest version. And also you would make sure that you are installing it from the right developer, not some random Bark project. After you have done pip install git plus the GitHub repository and installing Bark, the next thing is you have to load certain things. First from Bark, import sample rate, generate audio, preload models. And because on the Google Collab, just to display the audio, you may not have to do this if you are using this on you know local machine without Jupyter Notebook. But if you are using Jupyter Notebook, then you can use this that to create a simple widget, which you can use to play the audio. The next thing is you need to do preload underscore models to load all the models. So this will download all the models. You can see that it has downloaded some 10 gigs, five gigs, another three gigs, another three gigs, like it downloads all the models and encoder and all the information that are required to do the text to speech. Bark is ultimately a transformer based model, very similar like GPT. So it requires a lot of these pre-trained models for us to do zero shot 
text to speech generation what is a zero shot text to speech generation you use the pre-trained model as it is without fine tuning the model with anything else so you're just taking the existing voice existing model and then starting to use now using bart is quite simple bark i said bark using bark is quite simple all you have to do is give a text prompt and in fact you can separate it by sentences to make it easier and then you can use the function called generate underscore audio and then play that audio ultimately so this will generate an audio array and then all you have to do is give the audio array with a particular sample rate and it will generate the audio for you so here in this case i've given the text hello my name is suno and mm, i like pizza and then we wanted to uh, laugh a bit and then we are saying but i also have other interests such as playing tic-tac-toe and I've already generated this. Let me play this for you. Hello, my name is Sino, and uh, and I like pizza, <laughs> but I also have other interests such as playing tic tac toe. It has done a really good job, and one of the things that people have been telling me in my first Bark video is that Bark has this noise in the background. This this is something that you need to understand. Like if you are going to use this for, let's say, um, a YouTube shorts or Instagram reels, this noise that you hear in the background is really helpful. It gives that naturally sounding voice. But if you do not want that voice, it's very simple. Import that audio in Audacity and just simply uh, remove the background noise. It's so simple. Any audio editing or video editing software does it. Or if you do not want to do, I'll give you a link in the YouTube description that's called Adobe Podcast, where you can upload this audio clip and Adobe will give you for free. I think there is a limit. For free, it will give you a certain limit of audio clip with podcast, like studio quality podcast sound. So if you're using this for YouTube or podcast, then you can remove the background noise. But if you're going to use it for YouTube shorts, Instagram reels or anything else, then you can keep the sound. It might sound natural and, you know, realistic. So this is a very simple prompt that we have given. Now let's start playing with this. So what Bark or Suno AI has done is they have given you a whole DB or a you know, notion page of a lot of different audio clips. And they've also given you notes. So you have got like one, two, zero, of course, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine male English voice, one female English voice, like dedicated female English voice. Then you've got Chinese voices, then you've got French voices, then you've got German voices, then you've got Hindi, Indian language, Hindi voices, Italian voices, Japanese voices, Korean voices, Polish, Portuguese, Russian, Spanish, Turkish. So you've got all these voices and for every voice you've got this code. So you know what language it is, you know whether it is male or female and you also have some no tags. Where, like for example, it says this is a background noise. This has auditorium sound. This is Suno's favorite. And people have also added some other notes. It says like prolonged silence at the beginning. If you use this particular voice, if you use this particular voice, this sounds like a translator. If you use this voice, there is a start at the end of another utterance. So you can, you get to know all these kind of nuances and you can pick the voice from here. For example, I've picked the voice here in EN speaker six, which is Suno's favorite that they said. And when I use that voice, I can go here and then say history underscore prompt and give that particular voice while I'm trying to generate audio. And that will use this particular voice and listen to this voice. Um, hello, my name is Suno. And, uh, and I like pizza. <laughs> um, but I also have other interests such as playing tic-tac-toe. This is once again quite amazing. Like the quality of this audio is really good. Um, I don't, I didn't feel like there is any background sound. And so that is good. And also that you can insert these kind of, you know, non-verbal cues as part of Suno. That is another great thing about Suno. So if you go to Suno's repository, you will understand what kind of things can be done. Like you can add laughter, laughs, sighs, music, gasp, clearing throats, and also you can add hesitations like this and you can add a song lyrics like this. The capitalization um, emphasizes a word and also you can add man or a woman for Bark to understand or distinctly respect what kind of speaker it is. So that is something that we you can also add. So 
adding laughs here, adding like the dashes here helps you have that non-verbal, I don't know, is it called non-verbal or uh, that kind of sound, like whatever that sound is, which is non-speech sound, not non-verbal, non-speech sound as part of the text. And I've not seen any other library doing this, even when they try to sound naturally, you don't get the control of controlling what or where to put that gasp or where to put that laugh. Suno does a really good job of letting you do that with Bark library. The next thing that I wanted to explore is explore another audio, which is a female audio in this case, Ian Speaker 9. Let's listen to the audio clip. Hello, my name is Suno and, uh, and I like pizza. <laughs> But I also have other interests, such as playing tic-tac-toe. In this, you could hear a background that is, you know, like there is some electrical inference or noise, uh, electronic inference or noise. It's almost like some alien species is trying to contact human beings. So I didn't like this voice much, but it still does the job and you can pretty much easily remove this background noise with any noise gate filter and noise compression. And let's look at the thing that Suno had said, like, can I add man and woman as part of a prompt and then ask her to create. In this particular case, it did not work well, but in the other cases, it actually works well. But I still want to play this audio clip so I understand like, how does it go? So I've added a gasp here and there is a dash here. There is a laughs here and there is a laughter here. I wanted the first one to be man and the second one to be woman, um, but it did not happen like that. Let's listen to the clip. Hello, I see you. And I like pizza, <laughs> but I also have other interests, such as playing tic-tac-toe. <laughs> so this entire audio clip almost sounds like, you know, you're on a fast moving car or something. And um, I, I didn't like the audio clip again, but again, these clips have its own purpose. Like the point here with Suno or Bark is that you don't have to use the same voice for everything. Like if you want to add variety, sometimes, you know, people do sketches like on YouTube re shorts and uh, reels, uh, you want you want two people talking and uh, you want like different scenarios. I think that is where this kind of different audio clip and adding these elements really make a difference. And I felt that it adds value to the video that you make or whatever text to speech that you do. Let's look at some other examples here. In this case, it is a Spanish example. Let's play this. Buenos dias, Miguel. Tu colega piensa que tu alemán es extremadamente malo. But I suppose your English isn't terrible. As you can see here, we did not specify that we wanted a Spanish speaker or we didn't specify that we want an English speaker. But looking at the language, like I said, Suno is a transformer based model. So the prompt has a strong weightage in this, unlike any other typical text to, -to speech system. So the prompt itself indicated that it should use a Spanish model. But when there is an English language, you could hear that the English is in such a Spanish accent like Ideally, like if you put some Indian language, the English would sound like me. So it is it is another good thing when you are handling multiple languages in one prompt in itself. So this is another example of having a woman and a man speaking in the same audio clip with the same text prompt. I would like an omelet latte, please. Wow, that's expensive. But as you notice, anytime we used this kind of same text prompt with man and woman, you could see that, you know, that car kind of noise. I don't know if it is going to always occur. There's something that I noticed while I'm testing this. So if you're going to use this, um, I would still suggest you use two speaker voice. That's much better. But you know, if you're actually building like a text to speech application, you wouldn't want your users to do a lot of things. Then this is easier way for you to define which is a man voice, which is a woman voice. And then finally, you can try different voices. This is another English voice. I have a silky smooth voice. And today, I will tell you about the exercise regimen of the common sloth. And if you want to, you know, add those non-speech verbal cues, non-speech cues, I don't know, I, I keep on saying this. You can just, you know, copy this from here. You can go back here. So let's say it says, I have a silky smooth voice. And let's make it, you know, clear the throat. And let's see how it does. It takes about 40 seconds for it to run. So once it runs, what we expect is it should say, I have a silky smooth voice, but then not immediately say, and should clear the throat. And if you want more, that kind of, you know, non-speech sound, you can see here and also join uh, Suno's 
Discord server. I think um, a lot of people find these things and share it there. And it's it's always always good to be part of a community and then learn from there. So let's go back and see this and then just play this. I have a silky smooth voice. <clears throat> and today I will tell you about the exercise regimen of the common sloth. This is one of the problems that you would face if you're using a library like this. Very similar like how it is very hard to control the text output of a GPT. And this is always a limitation when you're using a model like this. And that's where you could overcome that a little bit by using the speaker manually specifically saying what speaker voice that you want. But otherwise, um, it's it's very hard to control it. But either way, I think this is, I think Suno is an impressive piece. A Suno AI Bark is an impressive piece and it's available under MIT license and you can use it for commercial use. So I hope this step-by-step -step tutorial of how to use Suno Bark AI helped you. Quickly a run through, first check what is your GPU configuration, check your Torch, PyTorch version, install Suno from GitHub, not from PyPy, please um, install it from Suno AI repository Bark, and then load the required libraries, um, or the functions, load the pre-trained models, and then start playing with the prompt and it should ideally work completely fine on your local machine even if you have got an 8 GB VRAM or a graphics memory. This Google Collab Notebook will be shared in the YouTube description. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. Otherwise, see you in another video. Happy prompting.